Hello everyone, it is me, Demetra K, and I hope you're having a great day. This is the Demetra K Show, the Demetra K Podcast to be exact. Um, and we are not live, so I want to say that at the top, because uh, I know sometimes people come in and say, hey, you're not responding to me. It's just because we are not live, but we will be live uh, a little bit later. So the purpose of the Demetra K Show is to promote Black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the Black community. Uh, to make us a better people, uh, e even better people with the emphasis on even because we are great people, but we can always strive to do better. Today, we're going to be talking about the potential presidency of Dr. Cornell West, as he has announced that he will be seeking the presidency of the United States in um, 2024. So it's getting really interesting. So Donovan, what say you before we get started? Hey, you guys, welcome to the Demetri K Podcast. Once again, we are not live, so please take, bear that in mind. Look at the bottom of our banner right there. It's scrolling across. It does take time, effort to put on these podcasts and videos. So if you do so desire, please go ahead and donate to any of the uh, applications that are down there. Also, it is absolutely free to hit that like button. Uh, you can like, share, and subscribe. That gets the message out and helps people uh, know what we're talking about and maybe even change their mind and make an emphasis in their lives. Also, uh, this is a very, very interesting topic, and I can't wait to see what this man is talking about because I do have an opinion. All right. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to actually show you his campaign message um, uh, that he put on Twitter. Hopefully it acts right uh, lately uh, on StreamYard. It's not keeping up enough for us to, uh, the, the video to keep up with the, with the sound. So hopefully it does it. Keep our fingers crossed. Here we go. Times. I have decided to run for truth and justice, which takes the form of running for president of the United States as a candidate for the People's Party. I enter in the quest for truth. I enter in the quest for justice, and the presidency is just one vehicle to pursue that truth and justice, what I've been trying to do all of my life. I come from a tradition where I care about you. I care about the quality of your life. I care about whether you have access to a job with a living wage, decent housing, women having control over their bodies, health care for all, the escalating, the destruction of the planet, the destruction of American democracy. Democracy creates disruption. It creates an eruption. It creates an interruption. Wide from below, the energies of everyday people is manifest. And I know there are precious people in your life who you care for. That's why it's important for you to be involved, important for you to participate. We're not talking about hating anybody. We're talking about loving. We're talking about affirming. We're talking about empowering those who have been pushed to the margins because neither political party wants to tell the truth about Wall Street, about Ukraine about the Pentagon, about big tech. Neo-fascists like Brother Trump or milquetoast neoliberals like Brother Biden. Wow, well, I'm so okay. happy to make a world-shaking decision. You know what I mean? Well, well, I know well, gangsters when I see them. <laughs> <laughs> and gangsters not a subjective expression, it's an objective condition. Mm. Do we have what it takes? We shall see. But some of us are going to go down Fighting, go down swinging with style and a smile, accenting the best in you and trying to tease out the best in me. Let's do it together. So, sorry that was a little choppy, but it was a little better than it was before when we tried to do this. So anyway, some of you, who have, uh, if you've lived under a rock, Dr. Cornell West is 70 years old and he has been on the scene for a very long time. Uh, he is a professor uh, at Harvard. I don't know if he's still teaching, but he was um, at Harvard. He has gotten his education, his doctorate um, in philosophy uh, from that of Princeton. And he is considered to be a philosopher, activist, uh, 
and he deals with race, gender, uh, class equality and things like that. Some of y'all might have seen him uh, in 2020 when he was helping Bernie Sanders run uh, for the presidency of the United States. Uh, some people called uh, people who supported Bernie, Bernie Kratz. So he was definitely uh, a Bernie Kratz, if you will. You guys know that Bernie Sanders was a, a big time socialist, as for what people uh, say. And so is that of Dr. Cornell West. Uh, as he said, he is for health care for all. And, you know, of course, justice equality. He says that uh, he um, is against war. He wants to end all the wars. I wasn't really sure if we're really any um, at this moment, but maybe that was just me hearing something different. Of course, he is not uh, with the business as far as uh, what's going on in Ukraine. He also said he wants to push back against um, big tech. Also, is fighting uh, for that of uh, democracy. We've been hearing that a lot. Democracy is in danger. De democracy, democracy, democracy. So he wants to try to restore democracy. Uh, what else? Uh, Dr. Cornell West is an author of 20 books. He personally edited 13 of them himself. Uh, now, in when Obama was running, you guys probably heard a lot about him then, along with that of Tavis Smiley. They actually took uh, President Obama to task, basically saying that he has done nothing for black people. A lot of black people got mad at um, Dr. Cornell West and Tavis Smiley, basically calling them names. Oh, how dare you? He's the first black president. You guys didn't do that to any other president, this, that, and the other. And I'll tell you guys some things that he said specifically um, later on. Um, but yeah, so he has thrown his hat into the ring. He's running for the People's Party, which is still a left wing uh, party. Uh, but I guess he's trying to make the difference there. Now, I should say that, of course, there's a lot of people who are happy that he's running. Then there's a lot of people who are mad that he's running because they actually think that it will help uh, that of DeSantis and Trump. Of course, you know, they are running on the Republican side. Are they trying to anyway? To, um, and also Mike Pence, sounds like he's thrown his hat into the ring. Mike Pence was the vice president uh, under Trump. So it's getting very heated, but a lot of people are saying that he's actually going to help uh, the Republicans. And so what else before I give it to Donovan? I just want to make sure I cover everything else. Uh, yeah, so, uh, there you have it. I should say, just go and put it on out there. Dr. Cornell West is married to, I don't know if she's white, but she's Middle Eastern or something like that. She's not a black woman. Uh, Dr. Cornell West has been married, I think four or five times. I want to say uh, maybe two to three of those wives have been something other than black. Um, so just to put it out there. So Donovan. Well, you know, he put a lot of uh, stuff out there. I was doing some research on him because, you know, I've heard of Cornell West, you know, to me, from what I knew when, when, I, when I researched and before I researched all this other stuff, and I still believe it, he would be considered part of the talent intent that's supposed to come back and do all of this great stuff, right? You know, Boulay, you know, he's an elitist type, you know, the, the, the top of the crop. Uh, but you guys notice in, in that picture, I don't know if we saw it in this video, um, was that Cornell West or was that a young David Ruffin? It, it was Cornel West. Okay. okay, yeah, he looked like a young David Ruffin in there. So I'll give him that. that that's a plus. He might get in there that. But uh, his candidacy, candidacy for the People's Party, the, the People's Party is a left uh, uh, political group. So it's not going to affect the uh, Republicans right now in the primaries. It's going to affect the Democrats. But, but here's the thing when you're dealing with uh, political parties and a bunch of people running in the, in the primaries, the incumbent is helped because that splits the vote, but the, the, the majority of the people that are gonna vote for the incumbent are gonna vote for that incumbent no matter what. It's the sprinkle of the votes left that the other people gotta fight for. So the more people that jump in, the better it is for that incumbent. So there you go with Joe Biden, the more people that come in, he has a better chance of, of winning re-election because his core people are gonna vote for him. So I think that that's an, another reason to put him in there because it just doesn't make sense at 70 years old why are you going to run for president? I'm not into ageism or anything of that nature, but one of the problems that we have in our country is once again, if you guys have been watching and listening to my, to, to, to my podcast, black politicians ain't it. This is what I talk about. Uh, every generation before the baby boomers did about 20 to 25 years in government, and then they moved on and moved to senior positions, to become senior statement. The baby boomers have been in power now for almost 40 something years. Imagine that, 
40 something years. Supreme Court justices, most of them, well, I wouldn't say most of them anymore, but baby boomers, the T Chief Justice Clarence Thomas, he's been on the, the bench for 30 something years. Look how he's acting. So, th so that's an issue that I would say thing. Now in his agenda, please somebody, and Demetri, maybe, maybe you can do this. And if, if somebody out there that, that's listening and watching, please tell me in some of the, the platitudes that he put out there, what makes his agenda any different than a, liber than a, a liberal Democrat? He sounded just like a, a liberal Democrat. Oh, I'm a fight for democracy, women, this, this, that brother, you know, and, you know, and I'm kind of disappointed because Cornell West was supposed to be this talented 10th representing the black folks. Didn't say one thing about black people specifically, did not say one thing. And maybe we didn't see the see and hear the whole platform, but in the video, I didn't hear anything about specifically for black people, nothing about reparations, which is a very hot topic right now. But he said something about Ukraine. He said something about, you know, all the other stuff, but nothing when it comes to his own people. So that's a that's a big thing. Um, health care. I thought we've already addressed health care with, with Obamacare. So why do they keep bringing up these things that have already been addressed? Everybody has access to health care. It's a crime not to have access to health care in the United States. Yes, you're going to pay $10, $20. Nobody said you got to have the best health care. They just said you got to have it. So. His thing about health care, I'm not understanding that because that was already decided. That is why the, the uh, Republicans have voted, what, over 100 times to repeal the ACA. And yet nothing's been done. And even during uh, Trump's time in, in power, they didn't repeal it. So I don't understand this thing about health care. So I think it's another uh, Democratic trick. And then if you guys noticed, the last thing, if you guys noticed, he said, we're going to love them. We're loving it. Now, Malcolm X said this about uh, pastors and those people, and I'm going to paraphrase. He said, we're going to overcome them with our capacity to love. What kind of phrase is that? We're going to overcome them with our capacity to love. Again, he's appealing to Black people and people of, uh, of hardcore Christian faith that loving somebody is going to change the economic status and the quo to pull your heartstrings to vote for him and split the vote. And that's what I think his, his thing is, because if he really wanted to do something, he should have done something 20 years ago, 30 years ago. And he probably would have made a difference, at least in my opinion. Well, for me, I don't hate a uh, Cornell West uh, presidency. And here's why. It's not mm -hmm. that I think he can be president because I really don't think that he has a chance but I love that he does give people another option. Of course, we know what's going on with Joe Biden. It does not seem like he may or may not be there completely. For whatever reason, he's an older guy, right? He'll be 86 years old by the end of his second term if he is reelected, right? Um, and Robert F. Kennedy is running as well as, as, you know, as far as a Democrat. Some people are saying that his talking points are too staunch as far as um, you know uh, being a Republican or whatever. It sounds like on the right. So some people may not want to vote for him. So it gives people an opportunity to say, well, y'all say the, the vote blue no matter who crowd, you know, vote blue no matter who. All right. Dr. Cornell West is on the blue, the left side, if you will. That also answers the crowd of, well, our ancestors died for the right to vote. All right. That also gives those people, you know what? You're right. Let me go on and vote for Dr. Cornell West. And it also answers the crowd that says, well, if you don't vote, you can't complain. All right, then I'm going to go in there and I'm going to vote for Dr. Cornell West. Now, as I said, I don't hate that he's running because it is a good protest vote. Some people are, you know, like, I don't like Joe Biden. I don't like Trump. I don't like DeSantis. So some people are saying, I'm going to sit it out. But if you feel like you want to be involved in, the process of voting. And I, I like Cornell West. Now, is he a perfect candidate? No, he's not a perfect candidate. No per candidate is perfect. Now, I know that uh, Dr. Cornell West has given reparations a lot of uh, talks. I even think he's got a book on it, if I'm not mistaken. So forgive me uh, for not knowing all uh, his uh, stances on reparations. I know that he does believe that it's important, but will he actually make that uh, something on his agenda? I don't know. As I said, I went on to his uh, website, uh, cornellwest24.com, 
and I didn't see any talking points about reparations, but it, it, the website was pretty vague. So it wasn't fully filled out just yet. Maybe they're waiting to do that because he just announced it uh, yesterday. So I don't know. But I like that it gives people uh, another option. You know, of course, DeSantis, he's a Republican. And he's, uh, to me, if you ask me, he's worse than Trump, you know. And a lot of people don't like Trump. Of course, Trump was president before. So, yeah, the, to me, it's perfect. So it, it, it does answer that crowd. Now, the opposition or a lot of people are saying, well, He's going to make it easier for Trump to win or for DeSantis to win. It's going to take votes away from Joe Biden. But my thing is this. Why, why, why do you care? What a difference does it make? Who's in the White House at this point? Because Joe Biden has not done anything to help uh, specifically help the lives of black people. I say specifically, right? Has not done anything like he's done for everybody else. Neither will DeSantis. Neither will Trump. So if you ask me, they're all the same person. So what difference does it make um, if he takes votes away from Joe Biden? Joe Biden is the only one that stood up in that podium and said, y'all stood with me, I'm going to stand with y'all. And he has not done that yet. Now, Trump actually has done a few things specifically for black people. So hey, Trump really does have more of a record with helping black people. And I'm, st I'm, I'm speaking specifics now i want to say this too because i know a lot of people who not a lot but some people who watch things on the internet especially what i'm saying do not know how to actively uh do deductive reasoning it's faulty you'll think because i'm saying something um about joe biden having votes taken for him that i must be supporting trump i hate that that's where um the thinking process has gone in the political uh process somebody brings up talking points oh you must be for for Trump, you must be a Republican. It's like, no, if that's the, the how you do deductive reasoning, then you might need to go back to the drawing board. Just because I said that does not mean I'm for Trump or whatever the case is. I'm for whoever you want to, you know, go vote for. But I'm not mad at uh, Dr. Cornell Rest for running. I'm not. Uh, good points there. Like I said, uh, when, when people do that, that's the, uh, the uh, there's four, uh, three principles of that. Fear, shame, and scaring tactics. And, and, and that and they do that to try to bully you to get you to vote. And mostly that's done by the Democrats at, at the end of the day, the Democratic, the hardcore Democratic uh, Party shills will tell you that, oh, you know, you must hate your mama. You know, you, you know, you must be against gays. And, you know, you know what I mean? And it's like, well, if you're a conservative person or religious person and you believe a certain way, that doesn't necessarily, you know, to me, when, when people do that, obstruction is physical. It's physical. So if you were raised a certain way and let's say, let's just talk about the LGBT community real quick. And that's not your preferred lifestyle. That's just your, not your preferred lifestyle. So, but because you don't want to acquiesce to the minority group, oh, you must hate gay people. You must be this or you must be that, which is totally ridiculous. But, but, but you know what? You're absolutely right. It does give people a, a opportunity to uh, participate in the election and um, last election cycle, I voted Green Party because that was the only option I had really that really uh, benefited uh, what I wanted to do. I definitely wasn't going to give my uh, vote to the Democratic Party. I definitely wasn't going to give my vote to the Republican Party. I, I voted for a party that aligned with, with what I wanted and, and the things that I thought that would benefit me uh, in particular. Um, you know, People always talk about this democracy. We got to save democracy, save the democracy. And my, my question to you and everybody out there is this. Do we actually live in a democracy? Because it seems to me you've got LGBTQ got rights and benefits. Asians got an Asian crime bill. And those are the smallest groups comparatively. And yet they dictate to what the majority is going to do. In a real democracy, it's supposed to be majority rules. And yet they keep saying democracy, democracy, democracy. Black people are, let's, let's just, I'm a, I'm a roundup. Let's just say we're 15% of the population. At 15% of the population of all black people that, that took the census, Asians are about seven to 8% of the population and they got a crime bill. And overwhelmingly, almost half of Asians didn't vote Democrat. But yet they got something for, for, and, for and for not their vote. But here we are, almost double their numbers from the Democratic Party. We didn't get anything 
it's supposed to be, be majority rules in a country of a democracy that you live in. And Demetra, I want you to also help the people understand in its purest form, comparatively, democracy is very, very brutal. Would you agree with that compared to that of uh, socialism? Well, see, <clears throat> what I understand democracy to be is everybody has a say so. That's not the case here in the United States of America because we keep hearing people talking about protect democracy or democracy is in danger and things like that. But as a black person, you need to ask yourself, when have you ever had a say so about anything in the United States of America? I don't care. It's regarding, you know, even the water. You don't have a say so about the water that comes into your neighborhood. So yet you hear these people, including that of Dr. Cornell West, I talk about we need to protect democracy, but it's never been the black people have never benefited from democracy. It, it, we never have. So that's why when I hear it, I, I just think that's an odd concept to pump, uh, to pump uh, to everybody, to black people, especially. Now, when you talk about something like democracy, yeah, Asians, Hispanics, LGBTQ, and everybody else that's uh, considered to be marginalized, they have benefited from democracy because they do have a say so. That's that that's the crux of political democracy. Everybody has a say so. So I think when we are mature enough to understand what people are actually saying, again, this goes back to the talking points of Obama, hope and change, hope and change. Oh, we got to believe in hope and change and, you know, all that. And so everybody ran around saying it. Right. See, si or I think that's how you say it in Spanish. I know it's jacked it up. It says, yes, we can. What can we do? What is this? Yes, we can. Right. So what happens is we get all these slogans and these catchphrases and they know that most people and I, y'all could be mad at me if you want to or you be mad at your mama. They know most people that go into the polls are not politically mature or educated. Trust me, I have a public relations degree, so I know how it works a little bit. You throw these catchphrases out there and you keep repeating them. You keep repeating them. You keep get people all. Ah! It's propaganda at its finest. So when you keep saying, oh, democracy is in danger, democracy is in danger. Oh, you need to help us protect democracy. People really believe that there's something I can do. But as a black person in America, the next time somebody says democracy is in danger to you, you need to say, OK, let me can I ask you a question. When have black people in America ever benefited from democracy? They don't even want to give us reparations. We don't got a crime bill. There's a lot of things that we've been asking for in this country. They won't give us that. What in the hell makes you think they're going to let black people have a say as to how the country is running? Because if we get a say, we're going to say we want all of those things, damn it, and make it happen. So they're not ever interested in you getting that. And, and I'm speaking from a black woman point of view for black people. They're not interested in us having democracy. In fact, most people in America don't benefit from democracy because if we did, you wouldn't have old ass Joe in the White House or any of those other people. They would say, you know what? Most American people think I'm too old, right? Because that's a say so. Most of the American people say I am too old to run for president. You know what? Let me listen to them because that's what true democracy is. Listening to the people who sent me here. But it's not. We know it's a what? What, 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 is it? what does America actually run like? An oligarchy. We don't have a say so. They make, they pretend that we do. So again, be careful of the things that come out of these politicians' mouths because they don't ever, 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 ever mean to define it. And you know why they won't define it? Because you won't make them or you won't even ask because you don't know what it mean either certainly um is it uh, a lot of people keep forgetting that we are a republic united states of america is a republic and public is representative government we send somebody to there to represent us and to work in our uh feed um and of course they don't. Once they get there, they join the oligarch group and rule. That's that's the whole thing. And it, it, it's, you know, I always tell people this, especially when I go into public buildings, watch how the public servants react when you call them public servants. They get offended. 
you know, call a cop a public servant. You know, they know that that's what they are because that's the that's the proper term. But you say public servant, servant meaning you serve me, the people, your master, whoever it is. Not a, to me, it's not a derogatory term. It's a correct term. But what offended they get when you call them a public servant? Now, now we're in the the the, the uh, voting. Uh, time period, you know, it's coming up, these elections are coming up, the primaries are coming up like that. Uh, the Democrats used to say that voter suppression is, is the biggest problem. And, you know, to me, whenever they would say that, it was always pinned against Black people. Oh, they're trying to suppress your vote. They're trying to do this. Now, everybody that's listening, and Demetri, if you, you know, if, if you got an opinion on this, please, please, you know, uh, chime in you know, when I get done here. Everybody in the United States, just about, Everybody in the United States has some form of ID, be it a passport, be it a driver's license, a uh, state ID card or something like that. When you go vote, do they just let you walk up willy nilly without no form of identification and say, oh, yeah, just walk in. Sure, just go vote. No, but the Democrats are quick to tell you, oh, they're going to try to take your voting rights away. They're going to do all this other stuff. Now, notice the Republicans, which is the same as the Democrats. They're trying to say, hey, everybody should have an ID. But the Democrats say, oh, no, 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 you're illegal. We want you to vote. We're going to give you a driver's license. But yet they keep telling Black people specifically that Republicans are trying to suppress our vote while at the same time they're giving non-citizens the right to vote in a lot of these Democratic cities. Now, we talk about Trump and the rigging, and we know these parties are the same. So let's not forget that. The parties are the same. But if you look at it, the Democrats seem to be undermining the backbone of their party, which is the black voter, which voted overwhelmingly 90, what, 6% uh, for uh, the Democrats last election cycle, something like that. But yet, you're telling us our voting rights are at stake and it's all about the blacks being suppressed, but they don't mention Hispanics, Asians, anybody, everybody else is, is, is not mentioned. It's just us. And that's a fear tactic that they use. So in regards to that, we're going to hear a lot of that rhetoric in this voting cycle. But notice for two years, Joe Biden and the Democrats, once again, have universal power over all legislation for two years. Did they do anything about voter uh, suppression, so-called voter suppression? Nope. Did they do anything in regards to Citizens United, unlimited money in, in elections? Nope. But yet, you, they're going to tell me an 80-year-old man and these people are, uh, we're bad, but the, the, the Republicans are worse. I don't know. History has shown me that the Democratic Party, and if you guys watch Demetri K's show on Sundays at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, I was in the chat and I was showing young people the origins of the Democratic Party and who actually runs the Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan is a strong arm of the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party was formed on the basis of suppressing Black slaves and, and those those type people. But here we are universally supporting a party that historically has never been for Black people. And until this very day, is still not for Black people. 1994 crime bill is still on the books. Yeah. And they call that the Southern switch, you know, and we know that the, uh, the, K, uh, the Democratic Party uh, and the KKK came into uh, really, you know, the prominence uh, I know we started hearing about them, you know, toward the end of the 1800s and the beginning of the 1900s, but they actually were in, uh, uh, in play in the 1870s because more black people than uh, uh, than any other time in the United States history were in uh, seats of power. We have more black senators and things uh, back then, but it was the Democratic Party that were mad that black people had a say, right? They actually could have just as much say as a white person. So they started the scare tactics and the KKK and stuff. And they actually stole and ran a lot of those black politicians. They're all black men because black women couldn't vote either. Uh, but they ran them out of office with terror, right? Murder and mayhem and those things. So then later on became the Southern switch because if you remember, Black people, we um, used to be Republicans. Actually, Black people are still really conservative in the way we think, you know, religion and stuff like that, kind of, sort of. 
Um, but yeah, we were we were Republicans, but look up the Southern switch, nevertheless. All right. So in regards to the IDs, where you talk about um, uh, and it's true, you know, uh most people should have an ID. You need an ID to some degree to do anything, right? Most of the time, but as I, I was just looking, because I was curious how many black people actually do not have IDs, right? It says about 25% of uh, uh, American citizens of voting age, I guess whatever that is, um, uh, lacks an ID to that of 8% white people. So that makes sense to me as to why the Republicans was used as a hot button item, if you will. Well, because if we can at least get rid of the 25% of the people who will vote that don't have an ID, which is kind of strange to me that you'll potentially vote, but you don't have an ID, it, it sounds like you're a little bit irresponsible. But I digress. So I get it's a perfect strategy. Where can we nip away at the Democratic strong base, which is the black vote? 25% of them, if they don't go get an ID, they cannot vote. That helps the that helps Republican even more and all the other things that they'll do. So it's a perfect strategy. If you actually understand how politics work, it ain't about see, we know, yes, they are really friends, but it's about getting in power. Now, actually, we know that the United States does run, it's supposed to, and I guess it, it is supposed to, a republic. It's supposed to be a republic. A republic is what? The people and the person they elected, they have the power, which is why when the Republicans get in office, they're supposed to do for the Republican sector of the United States and vice versa. Well, that doesn't happen either because when either party goes, I will say one thing about the Republican party, whether you like it or not, they do at least try to go do for their constituents, right? Whatever that is. But when the Democrats get in there, it's supposed to be Republic, right? They're supposed to say, okay, Republic, which is the people who sent me here, what is it that we want? They don't do that. They get up there and they say, well, I know we talked about student loan, getting rid of the debt. We ain't going to do that either. I never talked about reparations. So that's off the table. Whatever it meant that Joe Biden was going to stand by black people, he ain't did that yet. That was very vague, but we ran around with chucks and pearls and ah, twerking and all kind of stuff when he said it. Shortly after, before he even got into the damn office, he told Negroes, shut up. I'm in charge. You need to work with the Hispanics because they going to be more and blah, 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 right? So it's not a republic either. So when we understand how politics work, we don't get as upset. It would behoove black people and the Democratic Party to say, all right, 25% of y'all Negroes, since we really need y'all, we can't do it without you. It will be, listen, let's get a campaign. Let's get some of this money and help people go get an ID. Because I'm from California. I know an ID costs you about $60 now. I remember when I could get an ID for 10 bucks or five back in the day, three bucks. Now it's like 60 bucks to get yourself a license. So I get it. Maybe that could be why a lot of people don't have license. Then, of course, you got to remember, too, as far as the driver's license, if some people got issues, and but you can get a state ID. So there's a lot of things you can do. So if you know that's an issue, and I ain't trying to help the Democrats like that, but I'm just saying, say, here, here's a, a, a voucher to go get you an ID or something. But the Republicans know that they, they know the weak points. Let's chip away at that. But the point that I'm making with all that is understand how politics work. So that way, the next time you hear, oh, the, Re the Republicans, are rep uh, they're trying to suppress the vote. They want to make people get IDs. You need an ID to do damn near anything in this country. So why should voting be any different? So that way, next time you hear that, you can say, well, 25% of black voters don't have an ID. It's just a strategy. It makes sense. Chip away at that. Duh. Right. I mean, don't you need an ID to open a bank account? Don't you need an ID to uh, open uh, utilities sometimes when you go into, you know, depending what utility most is and all this federal, stuff? Most federal buildings, you can't even walk in without giving them your ID. Right. I mean, you know, so I, I don't know if it's the ignorance within our community and or, or, or I can't even say ignorance. Well, I can't say it. But what I'm what I'm trying to say is this. It's the non-engagement that we have when it comes to uh, our politic. And if you look at our education system, how much time, Demetri, did you spend in school plus college learning about your civil rights and your 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 basic constitutional rights? 
Um, I, I will be honest with you. If we're speaking about me, I didn't, as a black woman, I didn't learn a whole lot about that, that I had to learn at home and on my own. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. That's my point. Most, they don't teach it because they don't want you to know how government really works, how the levers of power and that we are actually in a Republic, not a democracy. Blah, blah, I mean, blah, blah. we learned that the fundamentals, if you will, the three branches and, you know, things of that, that nature type of stuff. We learned some stuff about the Constitution. But as far as me, as a black woman in America, nah, we, we know that the Constitution was not written for us. There's only three of them. Um, Dr. Claude Anderson calls it the Black Constitution. It's the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendment. Those are the only things that really speak to, you know, black people. One is that if we're a citizen, the other one is the 13th Amendment. Slavery is about to set by us for, by, you know, being in prison. And the fifteenth is, you know, uh, the the right to vote or whatever. <laughs> so um, those are the only things that really speak to us. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's as they say in the nation, it's all about knowing. But the problem is, and I hate to say it about us, we don't really want to know. We, it, 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 but it's just the nature of people. But I'm speaking to us. We go along with the appeal to authority. Well, they said the Republicans are trying to suppress the vote. But then, as like I said, as I just broke it down, think about it. It's a strategy that the, they're not. Listen, y'all know how much money. Now, I mean, how on average, how much does a campaign of that magnitude spend? Well, the historic, uh, the last election um, was what almost uh, what the Hillary. Let's go to Hillary Trump. That was almost a that was almost a billion dollars, if not billion, more. More, right? If not more. So, with that kind of war chest being spread out. Do you think they're going to say, well, let's play nice. You know, it's not really fair if we chip away at their voter base. Nah, they're going to do whatever they got to do. In my opinion, they're going to play up out of Tanya Harding's playbook. We're going to whack them in the knee. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like, it's common sense. They got people. And now when I say they, I mean the Democrats and the Republicans. They got everybody else thinking Oh, we're enemies. We're fighting against each other. And then the people on the ground floor that's got to take their work, they ask to work every day. They thinking they really got a voice. All oh, the Republicans are just, all oh, the Democrats are not, you know, they should, they're doing this. Thing. Nah, they like, we, 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 we plan to win. Yeah, we friends, but we plan to win because we know who gets in power. We're going to be able to make some moves or whatever we need to do. So it's a strategy. I would for the life of us that we would get some education about ourselves instead of being strong by your emotions and that's what politics is which is why they uh, uh they engage in kabuki theater what is kabuki theater it's what you see but it ain't really what's going on you know but they put on for the american people and we get all involved in it but at the end of the day they're like we we doing this for us you know who this us is it's capitalism it because that's the real the enemy if you read the com, my, ma, uh, communist manifesto it tell you the real enemy the the puppeteer is everything else is just a subsidiary and it keeps us distracted from the uh the machine the ones that own the means of production they're the ones that saw in all of this this and we are so uneducated we Your mic is probably hitting your metal. Oh, was it really bad? Yeah, it was real bad. But that's all How right, though. We, it... we, we, we got the gist of it. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't that long. How long was but, it like that? No, probably a couple seconds. But oh, okay. um, but yeah, no, I agree wholeheartedly. And, and, and that's what I've kind of noticed when it comes to our politics. Every election cycle, even if it isn't the presidential cycle, even if it's the, co the congressional cycle, we keep falling for the uh, banana in the tailpipe because it's like, the Democrats are showing you what they're not going to do for you. And yet we get hook, line and sinker and we get behind them and we vote, vote like like this is going to get any better. Um, I can say this and I agree with you about the, how the Republicans, when they have their platform, when Donald Trump gets in the, or when they have their platform, they say we're going to do this, this, this and this. They do it. They do it. Tax cuts. Yes. Uh, abortion, repeal abortion. Uh, you know, they do it. Boom, boom, boom. Now, wait a minute. For two years now, the Democrats were in power. Why didn't they do some legislation to reverse Roe versus Wade and codify it into law? They didn't see, but you see what I'm saying? Like you said, you're right, the cabal that's doing all of this stuff. So, but what gets me is the lack of education that we have 
in regards to our lives and, and the future of our community. I was talking to a young lady yesterday when I was in court and reality is what, to me, what you see when you rock out your front door, that's reality to me. Don't tell me, oh, everything's getting better because the, you know, the white folks, the whole nation is doing well. No, that isn't my reality, right? I asked the lady in a simple question, young, beautiful black, black mom, you know, mom of five. I said, is your community from the time that you were a little girl till now gotten any better or has it gotten worse? Oh, it, 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 it's worse. They're gentrifying us out of there. We're being gentrified out of historically black neighborhoods for other groups of people. So where do we go as black people? Maxine Waters will be out of office if she runs for re-election or not within the next, next one or two election cycles. It's, it's a wrap for her. There was an article I read to where they were saying how Compton is now 70 something percent Hispanic now. Compton, Easy e NWA, Dr. Dre, it's all Hispanic now. So where, you know, where, you know, this is the Democratic Party that's supposed to be taking care of people that vote for them overwhelmingly. Voting is a transaction. I want this, you can get my vote. You get my vote, you're supposed to deliver what it is you deliver. We delivered the Senate, gave them both houses of Congress. We got nothing for our vote. But um, reality is what you see out, out your door. And I ask, and, and I, I look at across the nation where all these black neighborhoods are. In all the years of my, I've been on this earth 53 years, everywhere where I've known there's been black neighborhoods, it's not got, it hasn't gotten better, it's gotten even worse. And we are we are post crack crack era. It's gotten worse. So, but yet migrants can come here under the democratic banner. Uh, have you heard of the CPI program that they're doing here in California? Where these migrants could come here and they can get uh, like 300, something like that. There's so much money they can get. Uh, don't quote me, but it's called CPI. I was reading it late, late, late last night. It's called CPI where they can get uh, like a stipend of money to prop them up on their own two feet and all this stuff. And they're eligible for it. It, it's it's a program that's already there, and if people know about it, they know about it, whatever. But here we are, homegrown citizens here in the United States. We can't get reparations. I mean, we were at a point, Demetra, and would you agree that we are at a point where the only thing that's going to solve our problems is an infusion of capital, not programs, money. You, you were in California a couple of weeks ago. How many black people have did you see in in your visit here? You know, I didn't see quite a bit, but I thought too, because I was, I kept saying that, where are the black people? Because I know it's less than 6% uh, black people in California, but then I have to remember, I live in the South now, so I see black people everywhere, you know? So I think that's kind of maybe a little bit of a culture shock, um, but we know that most black people now live in the South, so that's where black people are going. They're, they're, they're coming back uh, to the South where we escape from, you know what I mean? Um but I will say this, you know, in regards to something like Roe v. Wade, which was the, uh, you know, the the, the right to uh, a woman's right to do whatever she wants with her body, whether that's uh, have a, a, an abortion or whatever the case is, uh, the, uh, the Democrats did not codify it because they all have a common goal. And that's pres a preservation of white life. If you think about anywhere in the country, it's mostly still white men that are running the country on both sides. They all have the same agenda. They all have the same goal, and that's preserve white life. Joe Biden is a Catholic, so ain't no way in hell he should even be talking about, uh, you know, abortions or, or, you know, we should be doing that or whatever the case is. Uh, I don't know which uh, religion Kamala Harris was, uh, you know, but. Well, remember, she said she was, her and her family used to sit around doing Kwanzaa. She's yeah, Indian. I mean, that's, she, that's, she, she, she's of the Hindu faith. She's of the Hindu faith. Right. So, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, you know, I would imagine they're, they're not very pro uh, deletion of babies either. So the point that I'm making is, again, that's more kabuki theater. Oh, they're taking their women's right to lie or to, to, to decide what they want to do with their baby and their body. But so are they. They all want to preserve white life. Don't ever get it twisted. This is all, this is all it is. The end game is preservation of white life. Even if it means uh, that Hispanics or anybody else who comes over here wants to say that they are white. You know what I mean? So um, what else? Uh, as far as Maxine Waters, yeah, Maxine Waters is a rap. She's a rap because 
uh, th- like you said, Los Angeles is predominantly Mexican. And they always going to take us for them to get, you know, some Hispanics up in there that really talk us some good stuff. Um, and then her ass is out of there. I know our cousin said I was going to die. Uh, she's she's out of there. You know what I mean? Um, now, and if you look at the way she legislates, it is on behalf uh, mostly of Hispanic people. So, again, when we think about something uh, like the Congressional Black Caucus, uh, together they are one. But when they go back to their own districts, they got to look at their constituents. And if you're in L.A., you heard their your constituents are probably more than likely uh, Hispanic. More, you know, the, the, the majority of them are Hispanic. So they saying one thing in the, on a small, on a bigger level. But when they go back home, they like, she, y'all know I was just playing. I'm going to make sure y'all got what y'all need because I know if I don't, y'all going to have me up out of here. See, I'd rather take some heat from black people because in California, it's what, like 5.8%, probably less than that, of black people. Comparison to that of 70% Hispanics. So they ain't, it's a numbers game. They're never, ever, ever going to, uh, not from this point on, they're never going to legislate on behalf of black people. Now, I will say this, even that little 6% of black people there in California, if uh, they were to get together and say, okay, we can still, we still have a, a, a lot of play here because let's keep it a buck too. A lot of those people, well, I don't say a lot, but a good amount of the Hispanics there in California, they ain't even supposed to be there. So they still, to this point, cannot vote. So while black people still have some power, it would behoove them to say, okay, let's get together, let's organize and strategize because they still make a difference in the uh, in voting in regards to Democrats. Right. Um, let me ask you a question since we're on the political topic. You heard Eric Adams recently uh, came up with a suggestion to solve homelessness that he wants to give churches uh, incentive to house uh, homeless people and $150 per person versus the $380 to put them in a hotel. And he's asking also citizens to open up their homes to house these citizens. But he recently in his budget gave up one point something billion dollars to deal with the migrant crisis. One point something billion. Now, Notice that when we ask for reparations as black people, one of the talking points of white people is, oh, it's going to wreck the economy. We can't do it. Uh, We need to study. Uh, You know, oh, my gosh, it's just impossible, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's just one point one in New York City, the, the biggest city in the United States. Ukraine has an open checkbook to what they get. One point. So this is a black man. One point something billion was spent in the migrant crisis so far, but yet 50 percent and Brother Phil was talking about this. Fifty something percent of homelessness in New York City are black New Yorkers. You could you can find housing for people that didn't pay taxes, that don't vote here, that aren't really from here. But you can't solve homelessness of American citizens and veterans that are sitting out there on the streets. What is going on when you see black faces in high places and yet nothing gets done? Again, if you study history, you understand uh, what the intentions were for black people after slavery. Abraham Lincoln was like, okay, send them back. You know, that didn't happen. Uh, because the white people still didn't want to do the labor, <laughs> you know what I mean? So they still finagled us or whatever the case is. And then shortly after that, the eugenics, the Negro project came into play. Well, we'll try to figure out a way to exterminate the Negro, right? Get rid of them, sterilize the babies or the women, a whole bunch of stuff. That did not work. As I said to y'all once before, it was prophesied that by the year 2000, when black people were supposed to be extinct. We are still hanging on, right? So you got to think about somebody like an Eric Adams and all these Negroes that are in uh, misleadership, if you will. They get their piece of the pie. They realize that they see they also know the nature of black people. They know we ain't ever going to get on the same page. Not no time soon anyway. So Eric Adams and all those people like we're going to get why they're getting this good. We're going to get our little be a hot butter biscuit and the, forget them. So let's take it back to the homelessness issue. Black people are 50 percent of nearly 50 percent of the homeless population in the United States in general. So the best way to help get rid of black people is don't take care of them. They'll die off on the streets or this, that, and the other. And uh, there's, of course, there's uh, abortion. Uh, there's the gang or uh, even just violence in general in our neighborhood. It's, it's a genocide going on in every black neighborhood 
and yet they keep talking about having these symposiums on how to deal with the crime in the neighborhood, blah, 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 blah. See, the problem is this. They don't have a problem with the crime in the black neighborhood. They will have a problem, though, when Ray Ray and them start knocking Becky and them up over their head, then that's when they are going to do something. Uh, I have this conversation a lot with people, and I always use this example. Y'all remember, and I've used it here before, uh, when uh, two life crew were uh, fighting for their constitutional rights, and even uh, Tipper Gore, who was the wife of Al Gore, vice president of the United States under, under Bill Clinton, uh, she was wanting them to go to jail for being lewd and vulgar. Well, you got to really think of the nature of what was going on. They were they, they, There's been music, uh, especially coming out of our community, not so much then, but the two light crew, they were kind of like the pioneers, one of them, of the filthy music. They were fine with it until then, because also let's take it back a, a little bit further. Who was at the helm of these record companies? Well, we know who it is. It ain't necessarily black people. They don't own no big giant record companies. They might own a subsidiary, but they don't own Capitol Records and yeah, you know uh, all the other ones. So the point that I'm making is those uh, white people, they knew that filthy music was coming up out of there. But when it started going into suburbia, that's when they said, oh, hell to the no. Now, we don't want our children listening to that. And I also tell people, think about the times when Tipper Gordon and Two Life Crew were doing this music. There wasn't the internet. There wasn't Spotify. There wasn't YouTube. There wasn't all of that. So that stuff, and they rarely played that stuff over the airways because it was nasty, right? But somehow the music got wind and it started to spread. My, uh, and, I, and this is the case in point here. Ask yourself this. Where in the hell did Tipper hear the music from? Do Tipper Gore, I know she's gone now, but does she look like a woman that would be listening to the, to she, I don't know, she might have been, but she probably heard one of her children or somebody young enough to, to play that music. And she was probably like, oh my God, she clutched the pearls. What is this felt? And then she dug a little bit more into it. Of course, you guys know a little bit more history. That is where the parental advisory sticker comes from. It was her. And that, due to the two live crew, saying, parents, beware. Uh, this music is it's, it's infiltrating. Just make sure you know what you're... So the point that I'm making is, filthy music was good until it started going in the neighborhoods. Uh, genocide is all right, as long as it doesn't creep over into suburbia. When uh, Becky and Ken cannot move about the, uh, the country the way they want to, that's when you're going to see a problem. You started to see it with the Asian community. That's a, that's a, a litmus test if you ask me. Let's give the Asians a crime bill. We're mobilizing against black people. We'll make this about black people, you know, harming them. It's also a warning to the black community. We're going to give uh, them a hate crime bill. But if y'all do anything else, y'all move on, stop moving on white people. And of course, we know the statistics about crime then we're going to have to deal with you. So the point that I'm making to all of that is they want us to do their job. Now, when I say their job, they want us to get rid of us so they don't have to do it. Right. Uh, you know, you brought up a good point uh, as far as remember the, the uh, Rodney King riots and L.A. riots in the 90s. Uh, when did uh, President Bush, the first Bush, call in the uh, National Guard when the crowd started moving toward Beverly Hills? That's when they were called in. They had no problem letting the black folks tear up the neighborhood that they lived in. But once they started moving to, uh, you know, the, uh, the upper levels, that's when the National Guard was called in and, and doing all things of that nature. Now, a an, 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 an last topic that I have in regards to like people like Cornell West. And like I said, I think he's a good uh, third party for people who want to participate but have something to vote for. That's a good point that you brought up. So I will agree with that. Does he have a chance to win? No, he doesn't. But. Um, the biggest topic that is out there right now is reparations. And let's just talk about things that people should think about when they go into that voting booth. Reparations, housing, uh, land, uh, student loan forgiveness, which everybody in the United States needs. You know what I mean? The, you know, the, the, these type of things, but it affects black people more so, especially our black women, because black women are the most educated, have taken out the most loans in regards to our group. Uh, and that helps suppress us down, whatever deal is. So you have all of these black shills out here that have these uh, platforms and you don't hear them talking about anything. Um, what's that lady in Missouri, Cori Bush? 
she comes out with, oh, we need 17 trillion. He haven't heard nothing since. You see how they throw out these lemmings? Uh, Val Demings, another Democrat who lost her seat, thank God, down there. All of these, these so-called people that we put in such high esteem are not talking about the issues that affect the very people that they have the same skin as. So what was the point of bringing up the $14 trillion? We, we know it was a herring just to throw it out there to make you, ooh, Democrats, we're going to do this. The question is this. These are the issues I want people to understand. Notice they are not talking about it. They talk about it for a second, and then they, they, they shut up, and they, they just they remain silent. They have a platform to put this stuff out. You notice they don't do interviews with the, the grass uh, the grassroots. They don't do any interviews with anything that isn't the democratic uh, echo chamber. And it, it, it's just, it's just crazy because it's like, we're seeing people being evicted, young families being evicted in the streets, mothers with their children being evicted in the streets, uh, landlords uh, revenge for the uh, epidemic that kept them with the burden of not getting any rent. So these, I mean, these, I, I've seen stories where these landlords are using false evictions and the courts are upholding it and getting these people out of there because they want the higher rent and stuff like that. I mean, you know, a, a, a case in point, young lady, she didn't even know uh, it was three days or quit, but she didn't even know she was being evicted. It was a three day and quit thing. But I guess what it is, is again, education, they're depending on her non- knowledge of the law that she'll just say, oh, okay, I got to go, you know, whatever. So um, people got, got to take in point. This is the season. If we're, if it's now or never for black people, if we don't make a change in this election cycle, I mean, it's already to me pretty much a wrap, but this right here, when we talk about lifesavers, if you're, if you ever been on a boat, there's a thing called lifesaver, like a donut. They throw it to you when you're out there and you're about to drown. They're talking about a lifesaver that you put in your mouth. And they throw it to you. That's how bad our situation is. So, I mean, what, what would you say about some of these black uh, representatives and leaders that are out there? Kamala done, has done absolutely nothing in regards to her position as the number two person in the nation. She doesn't speak on anything. Um, again, you know, those black leaders, your Cori Bushes and all them Negroes that, you know, wasted people's time. Um, it, it's a, they're acting as a pacifier. Let's pacify them, right? You think the, of the, the, about the nature of a pacifier. Pacifier, you're not getting anything out of it. It's just solving the problem temporarily. Ultimately, when a baby cries for a, a, a pacifier, uh, you give it to them, eventually hunger is going to follow, right? They're like, okay, this is cool right now. Um, it's giving my mouth something to do, you know, whatever. But you know what I want? You know, I want some milk. Ain't nothing coming about this pacifier. So the point that I'm making is let's give the Negro something temporarily. And I don't mean to be vulgar. Something to suck on. You know what I mean? To kind of to distract them from the fact that they are really hungry. They're really hungry. That pacifier will hold them off for a while. At least it'll hold them off until 2024. Make sure my mic is fine. And I hold them off to 2024. Then once 2024 come uh, and go, we'll be like, <laughs> you ain't getting no milk. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, give us our pacifier back. We're going to wean you up off of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that's their job. Then they know there's enough Negroes that are run around the country. Oh, you heard Cory Bush and them. They talking about we deserve $17 trillion. And they know it's going to be that, but they don't. they know that there's not enough of us that will say, don't fall for it. They, they, they don't mean it. They're just telling you something because they all have gotten their talking points. They've all have gotten their marching orders. Y'all get out there and y'all reassure them Negroes that something may be coming. We know it ain't because we still need them to show up. So give them the pacifier. Give them the carrot on the string. Just give them something to keep them coming to the polls and then we'll sock them in the stomach, you know, after... <laughs> After the, the the ink is dry on the ballots and we got back in there, or or or, or they'll say something like, "Well, what the, you know, what we need is more Democrats in the House. We need more Democrats in the Senate." Now, notice when it came to the filibuster, which is bull. There's no law. Brother Phil talks about this. We talk about it uh, a few years back. 
There's no law that said the filibuster means anything. So notice they suspended the filibuster to give the Asians their crime bill. So what makes our situation any different? But see, but see, when you tell people these facts, explain when you tell our people these facts. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, I didn't know Joe Biden was the author of the crime bill. I didn't know. Now you know. But if they suspended when Kevin McCartney finagled his way into being Speaker of the House, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's it, it, it's it's really just it's talking points. They know most people won't really even uh, give it a first thought. Now, damn, a second thought, but a first thought, you know, so. We are, we we need to uh, do a better job of dissecting what's really going on. So anyway, y'all, we're going to get out of here. Uh, we'll see y'all live where we are going to be real, talking about. Real, real quick, though, uh, and you guys, please, please, please tune in if you guys haven't done so to uh, the Brother Philip, Philip Scott podcast. He has a great podcast there. And also tune into the African Diaspora News Channel where you're going to see Demetra drop uh, things that are imperative to our community all over the nation and also at three at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Tune in to the Demetri K Show. If you have nothing to do on Sundays, please tune in. That is a very interactive show where we actually talk to you and you could come on the show and give your opinion in regards to the topic that we are talking about. So I just wanted to put that little carrot out there. You guys are always invited. Demetra, once again, a uh, great, great topic, great uh, show. I know we got a lot of videos coming down uh, from, from your uh, African Diaspora News Channel and, and look for those and please hit the like and subscribe button, you guys. Absolutely. So we'll be back uh, at 5 p.m. Central Time. We're going to be talking about um, Ajika uh, Owens, a woman that was uh, deleted by her neighbor. And of course, we'll get into that. Uh, and it needs our attention. So we're going to have a live discussion about that. So we will see you guys uh, shortly. Of course, we always have ways to help and donate to the channel. Uh, everything that you guys do is much appreciated. So see you guys in a few. Peace.